In this video, we're going to see the new tool to do a tendon layout in our Enbridge. The new balance cantilever method. We still have one for uh, uh, for legacy purposes, right? There are still bridges set up with the with old method, so we still have to keep it. But this is the new methodology, right? So the first step is define the tendon properties. What is going to be the area of the tendons? How many are going to be? What is the friction factors? What is the wobbling factors? The angle of attack? All of that needs to be defined first. And then, as you can see here. These are all these tendon ducts location that we have defined previously. Right? So we got the 3D model of the whole bridge, the tendon ducts all along each of the one of the cross sections that I have is a standard. And then here, what I have is the uh, uh, numbers of the sections. So every section, every segmental box here when we transfer from OpenBridge Modeler to RM, it has been assigned a number, right? So call it a structural number, if you wish. And on this side, it shows the tendon names or the tendon docs in which we can go our cables through. Okay, so what we did again, it would just define the tendon properties, the tendon uh, physical properties of that. So now we have to start the tendon on, for example, a particular pier table and then go away from that, right? So we can zoom in, we can switch to transparency, but again, what number was assigned? Is that number or, or box number 100, box number 107, right? So we need to find that out on the tendon properties. You can define it or we can just select it from the catalog that you can also develop and just define a tendon group any information and enter the area the area of the duct the area of the actual cable itself And that's where we're gonna go next on now, how we're going to lay out all these tendons and find out what are these numbers at the top correspond to the actual structural element that we see on that 3D model. So we have done so far just to set up, as I said, the tendon properties. So now let's go to the tendon layout, right? And remember, this is the harp that we have, we have to set up, right? So then this comes the heart of the presentation. This is how we do it. So we need to lay out the tendons, right? All along, going to different ducts, right? In the section. So, as I said before, on this one, right? The software automatically recognizes and highlights that, oh, if I click here, that is gonna be the position, the left interior, right? On the section box being highlighted here, and that element 110 is actually a pure table, right? So, and that's how it does it, right? Oh, no, 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 mistake. It needs to go further down. So it actually needs to be, I will need to start that from that particular element. That's how we started it. See, so you get immediate feedback on the graphics and that's how you're going to start also in this tendon or in another one, right? So then you really know where are you placing these cables. Now, the instructions on how to place it, they are way at the bottom. So basically you select in which positions they go in every element. You select the tendon number that you want to assign, right? And also remember that you want to pull these cables. So you need to verify the stresses they are going through. So I'm going to apply a stress label. So, you know, a stress on left tendon one. So I know the stress that is gonna be attached and check the results on that, right? And the factors that I use that are gonna apply for the tendon, 
and I just say created. So now the prefix was T, so that's my T1 tendons. Right? And you see also the immediate feedback on the 3D model. Right? Now the next part of the harp, right? So it's gonna be going from element 115 from the same position, right? TL01 and also and look on the right side here how this is changing in location so you know exactly where you're going your cables through right so now it comes tendon three right so one more time you go and count and it's going to start from this side of the box and these are going to be the locations so you select that now one more time see how this is changing here this is the ducts that are going through and they say create another tendon so it's going to be tendon three right and then you're going to go tendon four tendon five every element also is being displayed here right and also in the 3d model you can get where the tendons are going so maybe you made a mistake or you are maybe going through the same duct uh with the same cable so that's a no-no so you can just also verify it on the 3D model, right? And remember, you're only doing the uh, left inside part of the harp on the left side of the box, right? So we need to repeat that same process to the left side on the outside of the box or the wing, if you want to call it like that, right? So how you do this? Right, as we mimic this process. So you keep going and doing that first um, section of the harp, right? Now, also, you set up the software to increment the number by one. So that's why you have tendon one, two, three, four. And this one that is coming now, it's gonna be tendon five, right? Got it. So create the tendon. At any time, you can change the properties if you need to, but I mean, this should be working okay, right? So now, as I said now, this goes on the left, on the inside. So now, using shift and control, I can select the whole configuration. And I said, I need to mimic the same operation to the outside of the box. So I can go on the same place, right? Uh, with the size of the box, and I can do Control C, Control V, copy paste, right? But it cannot be just a straight copy paste because remember it has to be a harp, right? Harping effect. So what we do is, as we select it, we just can go and say uh, copy paste mirror. Right? So here I will repeat the same operation. Right, but look, now I'm going to the right side. Right? So, copy mirror. And that's it. Right? So, my tendon 1, it becomes now, you know, by 5. So, it's tendon 6, tendon 7. So, it just has created that whole configuration. So, I got basically the two insides working. Right? Now, could I have done the inside, outside, on the left, and the inside, outside, to the right? Yes. But it's just a matter of how you're going to uh, count your tendons. So basically, I have from one tendons, from 1 to 10, all working on the inside of the box. And maybe the other ones will be the outsides of the box. So again, it's all up to you how you want to number your tendons and which one you want to consider the inside or outside for that. Because here, for example, right? So now I can, I finish working here with the inside left. So now I can do the same operation for the uh, outside on the left. I can do copy paste or I can uh, copy paste mirror. Or I can increment the number by something completely different. So I know that maybe from one to 10 tendons are the interiors and from 20, to 30 are the exterior so it's just a matter for you how to decide that or maybe on the interior it's a different tendon layout and that's what you can do here too and apply the copy paste process 
into that. So as you can see, there are many different ways to, to handle this. But uh, at least for me, this has been a great improvement in how easy you can do these tendon layouts. And if it's gonna be more elaborate, and then you wanna save these results, right? Or save this input, right? So you can save these tendons, the tendon layout into a TCL file in RM and just load it every time you need it. Kind of, of sort of saving a template for you, right? Because remember, this is attached by numbers. So uh, if you just, you know, have the correct numbering uh, schema, so then you can really adding or subtracting numbers to the layout, you can really accommodate to any kind of a structure, right? So here, basically, I'm repeating the process to do it uh, on the outside tendons on the left side. And then I'm gonna do copy paste mirror for the tendons on the right side on the outside, right? Could I have done it differently? Of course, because it's just all, it remains on how you want to do these copy paste operations, right? And then also what tendon numbering you wanna use. So, uh, it's again it's up to you how you want to to do this and this will do for one peer right one peer tape now if you complete the whole process right you can just have the all the tendons highlighted meaning a big box of highlights completing all the way from left outside to right outside and then copy paste to the next peer and to the next peer, and to the next peer. So you have an 11 span bridge. Well, you just do copy paste 11 times, right? Just playing with the numbering offset that you wanna apply, right? So maybe plus 10, so everything will be moved 10 units. So you will have finished here with 10 on 30. So the next one will start maybe with 10, 10 on 40, uh, stuff like that, right? So again, it's just a matter, I would say, uh, you just have to play with uh, your numbers here right? and complete. And then the same operation will apply, right? The copy paste mirror when you finish doing all these tendon elements. Okay? So the process in general could take maybe 10 minutes, right? If you already know your numbers, you know how you're laying out. Uh, so it's pretty simple rather than defining this uh, before every location by coordinates. And also remember, these locations are being read in the 3D model. So the actual tendon itself is going into uh, a 3D element and is calculating all these stresses that are happening when you go 3D. Okay, so it's a way more advanced calculation than just pulling a simple cable, right? So when you finish this process here, then you will go copy paste mirror and then you will have a full tendon layout for that peer right so the next step is then highlight the entire operation that you did in one peer right make it maybe peer two and copy paste all of that to the next one right and then you can just move the records here right so now we did it in peer 118 so maybe the next one is plus a certain distance right so then 18 records apart so then you just paste it and then you have the next tendon layout right and that's it so the next one will be next peer line maybe there are 10 sec 10 more segments in this span so we we'll do copy paste and say move the records and copy them 10 units ahead and then little by little, you will complete whatever number of spans you wanna set up into the bridge. Got it? So simple enough, as I said, it's just laying out. What you have to be careful though, is just, of course, highlighting the proper ducts that you're gonna go through your tendons and through what sections they're going, right? The 3D model will help you on the layout the ducts in the cross section will help you on the layout as well. What elements are you highlighting or you are considering, right? So after that, you got two options, 
right? One option is proceed with your design. So actually on the segmental loads, add your light loads, uh, all the other extra loads. So proceed with the full uh, bridge design here, right? So that will be part of the analytical, right? Now, when you finish the analytical or at any time, actually, what you can do, and let's assume that we have already laid out all these tendons now, and then also I add the live load, so I just finish the design of the bridge and my design passes. Or I want to see how the bridge looks like, right, with the tendons. So the next step is to uh, transfer all these layouts that being on the analytical one, right, and then as I go to next groups and next groups, is to transfer this design back to OpenBridge Modeler, right? So as you can see, I can continue with the tendon layouts if I need to.